Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wave Talkers Live. My name is Chris Mattia. My amateur radio call sign is Whiskey Six Alpha Hotel. And today we're talking about hybrid Winlink gateways and our ongoing Winlink gateway series. Joining me today are my esteemed colleagues, David W0DHG and Dan NR6V. And this is the Wave Talkers Live show. So thanks very much for, for joining us. Uh, let's go ahead and just get right into uh, today's topic. And for some reason that didn't advance. Why didn't that advance? There it goes. Yay, it advanced. Okay. So uh, today, uh, if you have access to WinLink, then go ahead and send us a WinLink check-in. Send it to all three of us. Our call signs are W0DHGNR6V W6AH. And our tactical call sign is wave talkers so you can uh, just separate each of those with a semicolon we'll go ahead and put that in the chat so you can uh, get better access to it send a standard win link check-in form and uh, we'll walk through that process here in just a second and down in the comments section let us know have you favorited yes our own word have you favorited your top three rms gateways that you can reach it's really important. And what we're talking about there is when you've tested your WinLink setup for whether it be VHF, UHF, or HF, and you find gateways that you can regularly hit, you should always favorite those so that in the event that uh, the network or the internet goes down, you're able to obviously get into those gateways. So um, David, you can pull, pull you guys down real quick. Um, let me jump over to uh, my uh, laptop here. Hi, Dan. Into the corner and take those slides away real quick. And uh, let's walk through the process of sending in a standard WinLink check-in. What you're going to do is come over here on the left-hand side, click on the new message button. Uh, it should spring open a new message. You can then click the select template button. It's going to open up the templates manager for you. Click the little plus sign next to standard templates and come on down to the section for mapping GIS forms. Give that a click. And down near the bottom, you should find one that's called winlinkcheckin.txt. And this is going to be really helpful at the end of the show. Give that a double click uh, where you'll be able to see whether or not your check-in was received because we'll bring it up on the map. Now, when you get the uh, the when it opens up your web browser of choice, you want to make sure that you click on this first date and time field right here. That's going to set the current date and time according to your computer uh, into the form. That way your check-in shows up within the right uh, range of days and times. Go ahead and give that an OK. Uh, this is going to be an exercise. And uh, you can let us know which band you're connecting on and which mode. Since you've got access to the internet, you can, of course, use the Telnet feature to send in that traffic. If you'd like to use RF, you're welcome to, to do that as well. Um, in the send to, this is where we're going to put all of our call signs, W0DHG, NR6V, W6AH, and the tactical call sign wave talkers. Just separate each of those with a semicolon. Uh, you're going to fill out the rest of the information here at the top of the form. Pretty self-explanatory. Here's that comment section where you're going to let us know if you have favorited your top three RMS gateways that you can reach. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and click the submit button and uh, it should fill in all the information for you. You go ahead and post that to your outbox and uh, then go ahead and send it. I'm going to open up my Telnet window here. Click open session. Click the start button. And if the demo gods are with us, it should start uh, sending and receiving traffic. And it looks like we have quite a few check-ins coming in. I'll go ahead and download those uh, in the background. And later in the show, we will check back in here uh, to see uh, the map and see where everybody is checking in from from all over the world today. So we really appreciate that. For now, though, let's uh, get on to the topic for today, which is a hybrid WinLink gateway. Now, for the past couple of episodes, we started off at episode was 57, and we were talking about setting up a WinLink gateway. What are some of the requirements that you need to do? Uh, what, uh, what do you need to do to set up the power and some of the thought process that you need to go through to set that up? Then the next week, we looked at RMS... Um, uh, RMS, the name just goes right out of my head sometimes, RMS Packet. There we go, RMS Packet. It's the one that looks like the little circle there above my head. And RMS Packet is for sending uh, VHF and UHF uh, traffic. And then we look the next week at RMS um, uh, Tri-Mode, and Tri-Mode is used for sending HF traffic. Uh, today, we're going to 
talk a little bit more about another program called RMS Relay. So over the past couple of weeks, we've talked about this ability uh, that we have to send messages to pretty much any other human anywhere else on the planet that we would like to send a message to. It's a really remarkable time in history that we are in right now because we are able to do this. But one of the challenges during a disaster of bridging that gap is oftentimes reaching that last mile. And over the past couple of weeks, we looked at various different ways of making that bridge if you're inside of a disaster zone to be able to get your traffic out, either short term via VHF, UHF link into a gateway or longer distance using an HF link. But, but what happens in a complete grid down situation when there is no access to the internet available at all? Is it even possible to still, to still pass our traffic uh, aside from just operator to operator? And, and the answer is yes, it is. And it uses a portion of the WinLink uh, overall infrastructure called hybrid WinLink gateways. And and what these hybrid windlink gateways do is they're relaying traffic via HF that, that comes into their gateway. So that's the way that we're going to define uh, a hybrid gateway for our purposes today as ham radio operators. Uh, there may be other, other ways to define this even, even broader or, or narrower, but this is what we're going to, to kind of focus on. And I want to take a little bit of a, of a dive back just a second to, to talk about the setup that we've seen thus far. So here is that RMS packet. And you remember that an RMS packet or what a lot of us are connecting to when we're doing when we're doing WinLink either over VHF or UHF is we're connecting our, our through our radios and they're going into packet the, the RMS packet station. And then that is connected to the internet represented by that that orange line and that's talking to the CMS, the common message server. And if you remember the RMS stands for radio message server. So it's, or I, I like to call it a relay message server because it's really taking that, that traffic that's coming into it and it's relaying it up into the CMS. And that's kind of the first step where most of us are very familiar with getting an RMS gateway up and running for the first time. Now, after that, we went in a little bit deeper and we started talking about that RMS tri mode. And this is where we start bringing HF into the mix. We did this last week. And even though we just showed that you can do this with VARA HF, you can also have a, an RMS tri mode uh, gateway that's operating with Pactor modems or operating in a uh, an RDOP, which is a, a packet over HF communication. And so each of these, as we talked about them over the past couple of weeks, are really kind of standalone servers. They they take in the traffic that's, that's set up for them, and they connect over the internet to pass that traffic into the CMS. And then through the magic of what the WinLink development team has done with the, with the CMS, that traffic routes to all of the appropriate places, wherever that happens to be, either via the internet or, or, or other means. So this is what we've we've thus far walked through in our various different scenarios. Today, though, what we're going to do is we're going to bring RMS Relay into the mix. This is a third application that's also going to run on the same gateway, on the physical box, uh, if you will. And the way that RMS Relay, as far as the initial way that it sets up and, and operates, Instead of RMS packet and tri mode talking directly to the CMS, RMS relay will take that traffic, uh, the, the packet and the, the tri modes uh, applications will pass their traffic into RMS relay, which is running on the same computer. And then that is going to be the one pathway up to the CMS or the common message server. So this way you could have one individual computer that's running as your WinLink gateway and it can take VHF traffic and it can take UHF traffic and it can take HF traffic and it passes all of that nice and seamlessly. Now I like to refer to this style of a gateway as a multi-mode WinLink gateway. It's taking in traffic 
through different bands, maybe through different modes, and it's just handling it. It's in other words, it's a normal Winlink gateway, but it's just a little bit more complex in its overall setup. And in the previous weeks, we showed where inside of the main site settings, you can check a single box that says, hey, instead of talking to the CMS, I want this packet station or I want this tri-mode station to active to to pass its traffic to RMS relay. And it did that just fine. So this is all just standard normal stuff at, at this point. But what we're going to be talking about today is when you add in a hybrid Winling gateway into the mix. And that's where RMS relay has the ability to take any type of traffic that's coming into it and in the event that the internet is down, it can use its connection into RMS tri mode to pass that traffic via RF to an RMS, to a different RMS gateway to get its traffic out. It also has the ability to do radio only messaging as well, but we're not going to go into that uh, for this particular episode. We're going to think about this in terms of ham radio operators where we're out in the field during doing emergency communications. We're working with our partner agencies and we want to show you what this process looks like and, and how it all interacts in order to get message traffic passed around. Now, I'm going to add a use extreme caution is required kind of notation as we start talking about this. And you'll see why as we work through the demonstration uh, for today. And, and hopefully the propagation gods are with us and uh, we're able to get this to all work. But without further ado, let's walk in just a little bit deeper into the details of what is actually going on here. So over the past, if you've watched the past 59 episodes, you've surely seen this diagram that we've thrown up. We've been literally using this since episode one or episode two of our series. And it allows us to help, to help people understand where your traffic is flowing throughout the overall WinLink system. And we're gonna start with the WinLink traffic, that's the, the WinLink message that's that's up there above me, and it's going into your WinLink application or RMS Express that you're operating with. And for the most part, whenever we're sending traffic, you always want to send that traffic via the most efficient and effective method possible. And literally for about 90% of the time, that method happens to be sending it via telnet through the internet. Most of the times we have a connection to the internet. And even when we're doing drills, maybe we're out in the field, we're, we're testing things. If you've got access to the internet, it's still a good idea to pass most of your traffic through that internet link. But, but what happens when the internet is not available to you as an operator? Well, to you as an operator, you're a ham. You've got uh, you've got your radio. You've got it connected into your WinLink. We've walked through that, especially in episodes two, three, and four, to really show you all of the details about how to do this. And so you take your WinLink traffic and you send it from your WinLink Express application, and it goes into your radio. Your radio then sends it via RF into whatever RMS gateway that you can reach, and then that traffic is passed via the internet up to the CMS. And that is a that is a very normal type of thing. And this gets that link of, of what 99.9% .9 of all of the situations that we're going to be in is going to suffice for this. Because if you think about it, you may be able, you may not have an, a VHF or a UHF link, but if you've got an HF link, you can more than likely hit another RMS gateway that is connected to the internet and you can pass your traffic via this normal mode. And it's a very resilient and, and very robust system for being able to do exactly that. But there are times when you connect onto an RMS gateway and that particular RMS gateway doesn't have a connection to the internet. Maybe not only are you inside of a disaster zone, but the gateway that you're trying to reach may also be inside of a disaster zone, or it, it may be being affected via other means. In which case, as an operator, 
WinLink Express, when you make that connection, that RMS gateway that you've connected to via RF is actually going to send a quick little note back to you. And it's going to say, hey, uh, you might want to try another gateway because I don't have access to the internet right now and I'm not going to be able to pass your traffic. Um, and so that RMS gateway hands that message back over to you as an operator. And what you do with that information at that point becomes really critical because some RMS gateways, when the way that they're configured, will literally just stop at that point. They'll say, hey, I'm not taking any traffic because I don't have access to the internet. And that's perfectly fine. Connect to a different gateway. That's why today's question is, have you favorited your top three uh, RMS gateways that you can reach because you really want to make sure you have multiple options for making that connection, for passing that traffic. Another option that can happen when you make that RMS, th that connection to an RMS, is it, it may also let you know, hey, you know what, I don't have access to the internet right now, but you know what, I will go ahead and store your messages until I do have access to the internet again, and then I'll, and then I'll pass them on. And that's another way, if you're not dealing with priority traffic, all you want to do is get that message out. Uh, maybe you know that that gateway is just in an area where the, the gateway operator is having some issues right now, or they're changing an antenna or they're, you know, something else is going on. That's also a perfectly fine way to handle that situation. You can, of course, change to a different gateway and pass your traffic through there. Um, or you can choose to say, you know what, this isn't really like critical message right now. I'll go ahead and let it just, just like hang out on that gateway. I'm sure it'll come back up and then it'll go when it's available. And that's, that is another, another option. But there is another type of gateway uh, that's there and that's called uh, the hybrid gateway. Now a hybrid gateway uh, is going to also send a message back to you. It's going to say, hey, are you sure you want to do this? I mean, it's not going to quite be that polite, but it's going to be a text message. It's going to come back to you, a little pop-up that's going to come back. Are you sure you want to pass this traffic through me? Because I don't have connection to the internet, but I can send this as a radio message where it will connect from that particular gateway, that hybrid gateway, and it'll connect to another RMS gateway via an RF link. And in some situations, that may be the, the only way to get the message out. Remember, you can, for the most part, hit almost an, almost any other HF gateway. So we're talking very, very, very rare situations where this would even become a thing where you may want to even need to go down this path. But let's say, okay, this information really is, really is important. The gateway is going to say, please think about your next steps please think really hard about what you're going to do. Because what's going to happen if you say, nope, I am absolutely sure I want to send that traffic right now in this particular way. The gateway will say, okay. Now, mind you, this has to be a gateway that is set up for hybrid and it has a lot of extra setup stuff. So not every gateway is going to be able to do this. But here's what would happen in that situation. So the RMS gateway would take in your traffic and it would, it would store it in its own little internal database. It would temporarily hold it. And if the internet comes back up, boom, it's just gonna send that traffic out over the internet. No problem, you're good to go. Um, but if let's say the internet is completely down, it's not able, you're not able to get outside of anywhere else. What it's going to do is as soon as you disconnect, it will wait some amount of time and then the gateway is going to start looking at prop, looking at its own propagation tables. It'll start looking at all of the other gateways that it is capable of reaching. Maybe there are some configurations that it's only going to talk to some specific gateways. And it's going to start reaching out over HF to try and find another gateway that is connected to the internet or that is accepting traffic in order to pass that traffic on. And it's just gonna keep trying. So this is where that extreme caution comes into place because as ham radio operators, we have lots and lots of frequencies. We've got the 80 meter band, the 40 meter band, the, the, the 30 meter band, 20. We've got lots of frequencies, but when you start to really think about how wide a signal is, how much bandwidth there is available, and how many of us there are that is sharing all of that bandwidth, 
we don't have a whole lot of frequencies to be able to pass lots of traffic, especially if a gateway is going to go out and try to keep probing via HF station after station after station and it's going to hold off and it's going to wait and it's going to listen and it's going to try and get that traffic through because it you've told it hey this is critically important so so this is where that extreme caution comes into play of really making sure you may want to think oh i need to make sure that this message is as small as possible it's just one line i'm not sending an attached form i'm not sending anything that is absolutely not critical and essential for life and property that you're trying to get that message through because you have other methods of being able to do that. So eventually that RMS gateway will find a link that is operating and it's going to be a slow link because it's going to be over HF and it will pass that traffic entirely via HF. And then that other RMS gateway will either repeat that process to find the mess, find its way to the location where it needs to get to, or it will connect onto the CMS and pass that traffic off. So that is, that's kind of the overall view as to, in a very broad sense, what a hybrid gateway is going to to do and how it's going to set up and how it's going to operate. And with that, um, what I would like to do is do a little demo of this. So um, what I've got set up here for us to to look at as far as how this goes uh let me jump over to this screen so this is my my gateway that i'm operating and you can see that it's operating here is that rms relay application that i was talking about now we haven't seen this before in the previous episodes um, and i'm not going to go into a lot of the details today as to how to do all of the different setups because there is a lot of different setups and a lot of different uh, questions that you need to answer as a sysop in order to ensure that this is going to operate smoothly and effectively and it's way too deep of a topic to cover in a single hour of a of a show so what i want to do is instead give a little demonstration of this so let's let's set up to see exactly what we have going on here so here I have my RMS packet station. So this is handling any two meter, 70 centimeter traffic that's coming in via VARA FM or via Winlink packet. Then I've got my RMS tri mode, which is operating down here as well. And RMS tri mode, you can see the frequency is changing as it's cycling through. So right now it's on the 20 meter band, and then it's going to jump to the uh, 17 meter band. And then it'll jump back up to the 80 meter band and then it'll go back down to the 40 meter band and it's just cycling through those different frequencies it's controlling my icom 7300 that's over in the other room and that's physically connected to the gateway to the actual computer all of this is running just fine i'm actually operating right now with uh vara and this is the vara fm signal that's here and here is the vara hf signal that's coming in. I'm going to actually minimize uh, the VARA FM signal because we're going to start off with just a uh, HF connection here to do this little demo with. So the other things that I have set up uh, for us to, to have a look at is I have my little Microsoft Surface. Um, this is a Surface Go 3 and it's my client station so this is the the station that i take with me if i'm doing an mcom deployment in order to send and pass all of my winlink traffic i'm going to do a quick uh, another check here for uh to make sure that i don't have any other traffic that's come in because usually we do there we go there's more coming in so we will download that all via telnet so that all of that is coming in nicely now, if you've not sent in your WinLink check-in, please hold off until after I finish doing the demo uh, so that we don't get any, any additional traffic uh, clogged up uh, in here. So we'll, uh, we'll let that finish running, and then I will check it once more to make sure that all of that traffic is downloaded. <laughs> Might take a couple of times here. Um, while that's sitting there doing that, I will show you what else I've got set up here. This is my ICOM 705. So this is the station that is connected to my Microsoft Surface. And uh, I can use this to pass traffic. I just have the AH705 uh, antenna tuner and I literally have a signal stick 
a little U a little uh, two meter uh, whip antenna, and I'm going to use the tuner to tune up onto tune this antenna up onto 80 meters. It is not efficient in the least as a as a way of transferring this, but my my gateways antenna is literally about maybe 40 yards uh, 40 feet away from me. So even at a poor tune, this will this will work just fine. And I'm only pushing out one watt out of the out of the 705. So it it, it works just fine for that. All right. So let me double check here. One more check to make sure it got all the messages off the gateway. And of course, there's more coming in. So we'll we'll download those and then do that demo because I don't want to pass any additional traffic uh, through this method that I'm going to do. Do one more check. And it looks like I got them all. Okay, so please refrain from sending more check-ins at, at this time if you, if you haven't sent one yet. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all three of those up onto screen all at the same time. So you've got my my client station, which is above me. You've got my gateway, which is uh, over there up on the top. And then over here, you've got uh, the radio itself. So I'm going to compose a simple message, and I'm going to send it to uh, NR6V. And I'm going to send it to W0DHG. I'll send it to both people. And this message is saying, uh, hungry, send pizza. You know, our, our kind of standard standard message. And I'll just sign it W6H. All right, so I've got, I got my basic message. And I'm just going to send this as a standard Windlink check-in. So this could be any kind of traffic that we're going to send. I'm going to I'm going to prep to be able to do that. So I'm going to post that over to my outbox and that's sitting right there in my outbox. Now I'm going to go let me bring up the the server full screen for a second. I'm going to bring up the gateway full screen because what I want to do is the gateway is sitting here. It's operating just fine, but I'm going to come down here in the bottom and the only connection that I have for this machine is its Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to click on the Wi-Fi network connection here. And I'm going to turn off the internet. So I'm operating in a completely grid down mode for as far as my gateway is concerned. And I want you to notice, actually, let me turn that back on real quick. So I want you, I want to point out something here so that you can see what is happening uh, here in RMS Tri Mode. So right now, it'll take it just a second for it to re see the internet. Come on. See the internet. Yes, come on, you've got internet. It should change this little blue symbol that's saying right now radio network. It'll change it over to say hybrid network as long as the internet is a is available. And of course, it's just sitting there thinking about that because it takes a little while on this super slow PC that I've got. Chris, I thought I saw when you reconnected it said internet not available. You might want to look at that. No, it's showing internet access now. Yeah, it's it it just takes just a second. Anyway, I'll I'll turn off the internet and right now it's showing uh radio network and that is what you would expect it to see when there is not access to the internet when it's sitting there just just operating idly. But notice that the the radio is still the gateway is still processing, it's still moving from one frequency to another. It's still talking to the radio. Everything is still operating just as as one would expect. So let me go back over to the, the triple view here, and I'm going to take my uh, session window. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go to Vara HF Winlink, and I'm going to open that session. And if the demo gods are with me, this will actually work. Uh, so I've got my, my uh, connection here. I'm going to connect on my 80-meter frequency. Um, so yay, a little 705 is going to tune up a 2-meter antenna onto 80 meters. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty awesome antenna tuner. Um, and I'm going to hit start and let's see what happens. So if the demo gods are with us, we should see that the 705 is uh, is keying up. And let me bring up my VARA window on the client here. There we go. We can hear this is the gateway responding back to it. And we can see we've got a connection that's going on. And you can see that connection going back and forth uh, in the top two windows. Now, because the gateway doesn't have access to the internet now, come on, 
It's saying, hey, I'm trying to send you a message. We should get a little pop up here. Did I leave the internet on? Maybe I left the internet on because it just went. That's not what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to pop up a little warning message. Come on. See, this is why we do live demos. Well, it transferred that information. Um, oh, because, <laughs> because I've been testing this so much, I checked the little box that says, hey, go ahead and just pass on this traffic. I'll show you when we do it on VHF. Um, all right, so let me come back over to the try mode window or the, uh, the gateway. We'll bring that back up. And right now it's just kind of sitting here, it's parked and we do not have access to the internet. So what happens with try mode is it, it takes that message in and it, and it holds it. In fact, if I come up here to view and go to messages waiting to be sent, I can bring this up and say refresh and see there's those two messages that I went to send. Now, this is a really important point. And that is because I just made uh, I'm sending this to two people. Trimo, when it switches over, when Relay is going to then push this out via RF, it's not sending one message to two different people. It's sending two separate messages. So instantly, we're replicating the amount of load on the overall system by sending this message out. And so Trimo is going to have to take, or uh, Relay is going to have to take over here in a second, and it's going to have to try and find a gateway that it can send all of this traffic to, and it will then start forwarding it. So sometimes this does take a while, which is why we're gonna sit here and just kind of chat a little bit and kind of go through some of these things. So what we should see is there should be another window that'll pop up here at some point. And uh, that will be when the RMS gateway, when, when the RMS relay station has, uh, has timed out of trying to make, there it goes, where it's timed out of trying to make its connection over the internet. And so now what it's doing is it's looking at its built-in propagation tables that every night at a particular time, the gateway goes through and it, it calls into the CMS and it rebuilds its propagation tables. And it starts going, okay, what are likely to be the best connections for me? And you can see the gateway is automatically determined that it's going to try and make a connection over 30 meters to it looks like uh, Kilo November 6, uh, Bravo Kilo Tango. And so what it's doing is it's actually talking to the 7300 right now, and it's trying to make a connection to that other gateway. And it looks like it hit it right away. We lucked out. If it had hit a gateway that it couldn't reach, it would then try a couple of times and then fail out of that and then go to the next gateway that it can that it can reach. And they would try a couple of times, it would fail out of that and it would go to the next gateway. Also, if it's listening on a frequency and it hears additional traffic on that frequency, it'll say, hey, that frequency is busy and it'll back off of that frequency for some amount of time and it'll go to another frequency. All of a sudden you can start to see where sending traffic in this way could very quickly jam up the entire HF frequency of, of what hams have access to in order to be able to send that traffic. So this is why if you get into a gateway and you find out it doesn't have a connection to the internet, find another gateway, find one that has a connection so you can get your traffic sent out. But this is at least showing you what the process is and how it's working to be able to get that traffic and send it out. Now, I just sent that traffic via HF uh, from, from my 705 uh, up, to, up to my gateway. But because both RMS packet and RMS tri mode are both running on the same system and they're both pointed to RMS relay, an operator who is sending VHF or UHF traffic into RMS packet could do essentially the exact same thing. So let me show you what that looks like uh, in here. So let me close this. Let me go back over to, uh, and uh, Dan and David, if you can uh, check your WinLink messages and let me know uh, if you got that message and uh, we'll go ahead and bring that up on screen also. So folks can see that that worked. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to create another message. 
I did get it. You got it? Awesome. Uh, I'm going to create another message. I'm going to send this one just to Dan, uh, NR. 6v because i only want to i want to minimize the amount of traffic that we're that we're sending in this in this mode but i want to show that it is possible um and i'll say thanks and i also got it in like 30 other messages perfect <laughs> thanks for the pizza w6ah uh and i will just uh post that to the outbox now this time instead of sending it via vara hf i'm going to go uh click the drop down here and i'm going to say vara fm Actually, I've got to open my RFM client first. And let me change my radio over. And that is on the correct frequency now. So now I've got my, the radio is set up to, to FM mode. Uh, and it's going to go uh, straight through the same antenna. And so now I'm going to come over here. I want to change this to Vara FM. And I will open session. And once again, I'm I'm pointed to my W6AH-10. So this is the packet side. Let me let me take my packet. Let me minimize uh, Vara HF here and bring that up for Vara FM. So you can see that traffic come in. And if the demo gods are with us, when I key this up, it should talk to my radio. And there we go. We can see it. Uh, we can see that traffic going all the way over. Now, here's that pop up that I was talking about. It says, please confirm that you want to connect. Let me let me bring this up full screen so you can see it really clearly. It's saying, please confirm that you want to make this connection. This server doesn't have access to the internet. And so something else is going to happen. So I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead. Uh, do go ahead and make this connection. Normally you would say cancel and you would just find another gateway that has access to the internet. But for this demonstration, we'll go ahead and push okay. We'll send that up and we can see that that traffic is passing all the way through to the gateway at this point. The handshake is going on, the traffic's going back and forth. And if the demo gods are with us, it'll complete its little handshake and it'll be all set. Come on. What's going on here? The joys of doing things live when you try and uh, when you try and push this out. There we go. There's the traffic. It goes up, makes it into the gateway. Session closes. Now, if we go back over to the gateway itself and bring that up just full screen, and now I'll go ahead and uh, on the on the gateway, I'll minimize Vara FM because that traffic came in and I'll bring up Vara HF again so we can see that that's where that's gonna go. Now what's gonna happen is RMS relay. This time, if I go up here to view and I go messages waiting to be sent, there's only one message and it's just that message that's going to NR6V. See, it's the one that says, thanks for the pizza. So it's pending. So this is traffic that's coming in via Vara FM into a hybrid gateway. And if the demo gods are with us in, uh, in a few minutes, there it goes, HF forwarding is going to launch itself. Now, it remembers the connection that it made the last time that was successful because it's happened in a relatively short period of time. So RMS try mode is going to automatically try to reconnect to that station first. And if it had a couple of stations that it couldn't reach, it will skip over those and it will automatically look for the next best station that it can reach. And here we go. It's talking to the radio again and it's transmitting that data. So those uh, that message should be going out now at this point via HF. As a matter of fact, if I uh, if I change quickly enough my radio over to ten meters, and where is it? It's at uh, one hundred one four five. I think I might have missed it already. One hundred one. Five. 
10, 10, 1, 4, 5, 10, 1. There you go. So what I did is I just tuned my my uh, 705 to that frequency and you can hear the traffic that's going between the gateway and that remote gateway. This is all hands off <laughs> to be able to do this. Yeah, we can't hear it, Chris. Oh, you can't hear this? No. Nope. Oh, uh, that means. I did get the message. You did get the message, though? I did. Cool. Awesome. So there you go. So that's that's sending that traffic uh, back and forth uh, with that. Let me go ahead and get off of this frequency and turn the noise down here uh for that so that is a that's a a quick look at the process that happens when uh a wind link gateway and actually let me go back in and and before i before i forget let me go back over to my go back over to my gateway and uh turn access to the internet back on so it will uh no longer pass any traffic uh through here like this in this mode so there we go. It uh, should uh, connect back up. And now we should uh, eventually we should see this little radio network should change back over and uh, change itself over to say, hey, I'm just running in a hybrid mode. And it shows it right there in that portion of RMS relay. There you go. It looks like it's finishing up and uh, it's finished with all the handshakes and sending of all that traffic. And there we can go. There we see it. Hybrid network. So now the gateway is back to operating as normal. Uh, passing traffic over the internet uh, as as it would uh, the the link for the the radio is is not in that absolute critical um, stage where where you know the internet is not available or so forth. So um, if you're wondering why I'm so surprised at at how well this works is because it's pretty complicated to get all of this stuff set up. And I am I am just absolutely amazed every time that it does work because it is absolutely so cool uh, that we're able to to make this type of thing uh, work and function. Uh, so that is that's actually the demo that I had for today to walk through this process of of what it takes to get a uh, Alvara. Uh, what of our what a HF? Sorry, let me let me start over again <laughs> to get a hybrid gateway um, up and running, and just so that so that you can see how it functions and how it works. So with that, uh, let me go ahead and bring myself back up. We're gonna bring uh, the guys back up to stage. I'll pull my mic down here so it's a little bit easier to uh, to see me there, and uh, we'll bring the guys back up. I know it's a little bit of a uh, a short show. Oops, there we go. I've had spotlight. Replace the spotlight there. Um, David, any any thoughts for you for for today as we've as we've kind of walked through this this demonstration of of how a hybrid gateway actually functions and how it works? No, I mean I think the important parts are that that you called out is make sure you know what you're doing before you do it. And, uh, and I'm surprised too at you, Chris, it, it was easy and you were surprised that you made it look easy and, you know, practice makes perfect. So that's, that's all I really got. Cool. Dan, what, what kind of thoughts? Cause you've been playing around with this quite a bit your, yourself as well. Yeah. Um, question I have is if I understand this right, you don't specify gateways that you want the forwarding to be done by it uses relay uses the propagation tables and tries to pick the better available gateway. So that's, that's where part of that, 
there is a lot of configuration that goes into this. Um, there is the option of being able to, to configure and say, hey, I only want to connect to these specific gateways. Um, there is the option of saying, go ahead and, you know, hit any gateway that's out there. Um, that can really tie up things um, because the because the gateway will be relentless. It will just go out and it will keep trying uh, station after station after station to try and to try and reach them. Uh, so the the smart thing to do would be find the key couple of gateways that you're able to to hit reliably. That would be kind of out of area ones that uh, you have really good propagation on. If I were going to set my gateway up to operate in this mode, I would probably uh, target gateways um, on the lesser used band. So maybe I would hit the 17 meter band or the 15 meter band or something like that, where I, I, I know that most of the traffic that's going to be going on as far as emergency traffic is going to happen on 40 meters and 80 meters. So I definitely want to avoid those as much as I can. So there's ways inside of RMS Relay and inside a tri mode to go in and exclude certain frequencies, exclude certain um, gateways that you're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you can, you really have an enormous amount of control. You can even control how that how that relay happens. For instance, I could I have my gateway set right now, so for this demo, it would only relay out the Avara HF. But if I plug my Pactor modem into it, I could say only relay through Pactor and only do it in this particular situ, you know, in this particular way, and and so forth. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of control that you have, which is why I didn't want to go into all of those settings um, because it, we would so quickly get into the weeds of every single different scenario. Sure. Um, really, but, but it does sound like it's very configurable for the gateway operator's specific needs and um yeah it's like uh, from here we have a couple of gateways in nevada and arizona that are pretty reliable mm -hmm. um so we might pick those because likely those are far enough away that in for instance an earthquake uh they probably be all right certainly in in wildfires and other kind of disasters they would be um Oh, very interesting. Well, thank thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. I learned I learned a lot, and as you say, I'm working at uh, expanding. You know, I've got a, thanks to our lesson last week. I have an HF gateway up and running on uh, three different bands. There'll be more coming, but uh, um, eventually, I think I would like to make hybrid part of it. And one one thing that I did want to that I did want to point out is that before anybody even considers operating or running an HF or a hybrid gateway, you really should be be very well versed at operating a VHF UHF gateway. You've then stepped up and you've been operating an HF gateway for some time. You're a very experienced HF operator, so you know how your antenna works really well. You understand about propagation. You understand about where you're likely to hit, and then you really want to limit and control how your gateway would operate in those situations before you even embarked on the idea of trying to do something like set up a, a, a hybrid gateway. Um, we're happy to work with folks uh, who are interested in being able to do that. And, and of course, reach out to the folks on the WinLink development team uh, because they really are the experts at this. We're just a bunch of amateurs who are, are trying to figure out how best uh, we need to be able to optimize and support folks. And, and for the most part, for, for all of the hams out there that are that are using uh, that are supporting their shared agencies or supporting their community and they're using winlink to do that I think the big take-home message here is keep an eye out for that for that notice that that comes up that says hey this gateway is having an issue of some kind and then use your fallback gateways use the other gateways that you can reach to be able to pass that traffic um always, always start with the the most efficient way that you are able to pass traffic start there which would be if you have access to the internet pass that traffic via the internet if uh if you have uh, a, a gateway that you can hit that is still operational hit that one via vhf it's going to vhf or uhf that's going to be much faster to pass your traffic out and get that 
uh, information relayed out. If you've got to fall back to HF, then hit a different gateway if you need to, if the gateway that you're trying to reach is, is already down. Use that whole tiered approach when you're doing this. Um, and, and also, as you can see from, from the little demo, uh, for for any clubs or organizations or teams that is that is looking to be able to test this or look and see, realize that all you need if you if you're super curious, does it absolutely work? A single message is able to do that to to verify that yeah that link works one time, and then leave the internet on. Don't turn off the internet on your gateway. Don't do that. It just creates all kind of havoc for the overall system because it, it just impacts everybody who's trying to operate it at that point. And, and uh, good operating practice says that we don't cause uh, will for interference. So um, that is, that's the overall uh, uh, overview that we had for everyone today. If you find, uh, oh, let's check, uh, let's actually check in on the, on the, the, the check-ins here. Uh, so if you didn't get a chance to send in your Winlink check-in, go ahead and send it in, go ahead and send it in now. Uh, David, if you can pull pull you guys down here for a second, we'll switch over and bring up the map uh, for for everybody to uh, to see. I still got my microphone down here. Let me move into the corner and bring my setup down here like that. And uh, let's see where we're at. I'm going to change back over to to Telnet because we've got that demo is now wrapped up. I'll open up and let's go ahead and check some messages. And uh, yeah, we got a few more that are coming in here. Uh, thanks everybody for for cooperating and uh, uh, resisting the urge to send some traffic through that W6AH while we had that in that uh, emergency mode like that. And uh, I'll go ahead and do one more quick check just in case anyone else uh, still had some traffic come in. Looks like we've got them all at this point. So uh, since we, oh, look, there we go. NR6V hungry. He sent his uh, response back. Pizza on the way. Love that. Thanks very much for uh, for playing along with that, Dan. Uh, so I was able to receive that traffic coming coming back in uh, through, uh, through this other means now. Uh, so now let me go up here. I'm going to click on the little, uh, the little globe icon. We're going to look at the WinLink check-ins. And I'm going to go ahead and display that on the map. And it's showing us uh, a map here. Let's check our filters. And what we're looking at, we're only looking at uh, uh, check-ins that have come in in the past 24 hours. So this is all the folks who have who have checked in. We do have some folks in the Philippines and other places who, uh, who are starting to do some early check-ins to the show. Uh, so we want to make sure that we can catch those folks and we'll say save. Um, and now let me blow this out to, to full screen and uh, we'll go ahead and zoom all the way out to get a global view. I'm going to right click and drag over and uh, we'll see where some of the check-ins are, are coming from today. Uh, over here in uh, ZL land, it looks like we've got uh, Terry ZL1HOG joining us from New Zealand. Thanks a lot for joining us down there, Terry. Uh, looks like we've got uh, Delta Uniform 3 Golf Kilo Tango joining us from the Philippines. Hey, thanks a lot for checking in uh, from all the way over there and uh, watching the show. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in on uh, North America a few times. I will right click and drag. That's how you pan the map around. And uh, it looks like we've got operators coming in from all over uh, North America. At this point, uh, we've got uh, Victor Echo 3 Yankee X-Ray up there uh, to the north of us in Ottawa. Thanks for joining us up there. And then we're just gonna roll over some of these and uh, see there's, uh, there's our uh, friend up in uh, Bangor, Maine uh, joining us. And uh, we'll just kind of roll over some of these. So folks are able to see that their call sign and their message did come through to us. And uh, there's Lloyd, good, uh, good to see you there. And uh, we'll jump into a few more folks here. It looks like Mr. Waterman is joining us as well today, coming in from his shares call sign. It's really cool to be able to see that not only are you able to pass traffic from one amateur radio operator to another, you're also able to pass traffic from uh, from different modes, such as uh, the shares network into amateur radio. And of course, you can pass it out to the commercial internet as well. So it's a great way to be able to pass uh, emergency communication traffic uh, to different folks. So we're just going to quickly roll over uh, all the rest of these so everybody can see that their check-in uh, did come in. We got uh, quite a few coming up here in the Michigan uh, area up there. 
uh, stations coming in in Ohio, Kansas joining us today. Hey, thanks for joining us from Kansas. That's really cool. I haven't had anybody there for a while. Uh, Oklahoma, um, looks like we've got King and uh, John there in uh, Texas, stations in Colorado, Utah, up here in Idaho, uh, Montana. We've got another one up here in Montana. Hey, thanks for joining us there in Montana. Very cool. Uh, another one up here in northern Idaho, and we'll come down to the Pacific Northwest to some of these other stations that are that are up in here. Uh, there's quite a few all stacked up in that location, and we'll just kind of zoom over these so everybody's able to see kind of where their where their check in has uh, come in from, and that we did get them all. And uh, let me go ahead and zoom into Southern California because there's quite a few stations uh, down here in Southern California as well, just so that everybody's able to see their connections. KM6 RSS. Hey, Robert, thanks for joining us from Ventura County and uh, quite a few others. Uh, uh, there we go. We'll just roll over. Here's Craig joining us. Perfect. Awesome. Great. So uh, with that, um, if you find the information that we're that we're sharing here, if you're finding it helpful, be sure to go on to our YouTube channel, uh, like the video, uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, so you can be uh, and ring the bell, so you know that we're we're pushing out content. You can know right away when it's out there. It really helps the content uh, get shared to other operators and. Um, if you find it really helpful, then consider going on to wavetalkers.com and supporting us with the Buy Us a Coffee link. That really helps to keep all the infrastructure up that it takes to keep the overall show up and running week after week uh, to make everything uh, that we're doing uh, possible here. And, and if you are a supporter of the show and uh, a subscriber, we really thank you. Uh, we also broadcast this show out on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, we also do it on Facebook and onto the Wave Talkers channel or Wave Talkers website itself. So uh, there's lots of places for you to catch up on all of those. Let me bring the guys uh, back up as we uh, wrap up today's episode. And uh, if you are here inside of the Zoom, then uh, please hang around for the after party. Uh, we usually, I'm sure, we'll have a lively discussion today with all of this, all this information that we've that we've shared out today. If you'd like to join us in one of the Zoom sessions for the live audience, then go on to wavetalkers.com. Down in the footer, there is a join us link. Go ahead and fill that out, and we send out just one email a week to to folks. Uh, so you're able to join us live in the Zoom and participate in the after party. So there we are. That's uh, that's what we have for this week. And we thank everyone for joining us. And with that, we'll say 7-3 to all of you who are watching on the, the live streams everywhere. And we will see you again. Next Look at week. the time, Chris. I'm sorry? Look at the time. I know we're in under our time. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> uh, next, Oh, next week, by the way, our plan is to talk about mobile uh, gateways, mobile portable gateways uh, that had been set up. And we actually just deployed one yesterday to support the Ventura Marathon. And so you're going to hear more about that next week and how that's all going. So we're very excited to be able to bring that now that we've got a bunch of folks who have worked through the process of, of becoming SysOps uh, and getting on this. So we're, we're super excited. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us.